Hey everybody. I have to hang my head in shame because I have to welcome you back to volume two of Credit Confessions. Cards that I regret getting. Now I have three special cards here that may actually kind of shock you a little bit, but when you hear the reasoning, I think you'll understand my missteps and exactly why it is I regret doing things the way that I did. So without further ado, let me let the kid tell you exactly what to do in order to keep this channel growing and we will get right into it. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe and don't forget to share. So the first culprit on the list is none other than the Apple card, MasterCard powered by Goldman Sachs available through Apple. Now, I have actually done some reviews on this card. I've talked to people about this card. This is not a bad card per se. It is just not a good card for me. And that is something that I did not realize, especially when I decided to tie up a 524 slot with it before I even knew what 524 was. And then I subsequently don't even care about it anymore. But the fact of the matter is, is that it literally took up space. Now, is it a decent card? Yes, no fees, you get multipliers, daily cash back. That is wonderful. Great metal construction that they don't want you to use or let anyone see for some reason, but whatever. But the fact is, it's not a bad card, but this thing is a glorified store card. Now follow me here. You get your multipliers are 1x on everything. If you, heaven forbid, you actually use a card, you're getting 1x. You get Apple Pay, which is proprietary to Apple. If you use Apple Pay, you get a basement 2%. And then the 3%, which everyone obviously is after because people want more instead of less, is only available at certain retailers. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it just, it kind of doesn't make any sense. I understand certain sectors, but only certain retailers. So this card doesn't do me a lot of good. I'm not surrounded by Exxon gas stations. I don't do a ton of shopping at Nike and or Apple, even though I do have some Apple equipment. But this is basically turned out for me to be a glorified store card. And that is the sense in which it is uh, existing. So for this one, honestly, I applied just to see if I could get it. I knew nothing before I was on the uh, credit journey. And I really, I haven't passed a ton of money through it. I was using it at one point and then I literally just stopped because there are so many other cards that do much better than this card, even with Apple equipment, unfortunately. So for me, this is gonna be a no bueno. And I, yeah, this, this wasn't a smart get, but you know, if I knew then what I know now, but that's my credit confession. Now for the second card, you've actually heard me talk about this card before. I've actually sang this card's praises, but the way that I got this card, is also something that if you've been paying attention to the channel, you know how I got it. And it's something I kick myself about all the time. Now, and that's basically why the second card is the Amex Delta Sky Miles Platinum card. I do regret getting this card and not for the reasons that you would think. It helped me, you know, start getting acclimated to lounge life. You know, I definitely, my wife calls me bougie. I, I don't care. I. I like sitting in a lounge if I have, if I am afforded the opportunity, then so be it. I will be in the lounge. I actually got this card back when lounge access with this specific card was $39. Now, if you have this card and you go to a Delta Sky Club lounge, you gotta pay 50 bucks to get in. It is not a complimentary entry, but it still allows you access. Now, the reason I regret getting this card, I don't regret getting the card, it's how I did it. I actually did an upgrade from a Delta Blue card that I had had for a couple of years that, you know, I passed some money through, it's no big deal, but you know, in order to flex and be cool for my 40th birthday, I um, decided that this was going to be a good idea and it, it, it just it just wasn't because I gave up so many miles that I could have gotten if I simply did a new application, but I didn't know about that. I figured upgrading would have done the trick and it didn't. So yeah, yeah, this wasn't a good one. It wasn't a good one the way I went about it. 
And that's actually going to lead us into the third one, which you guys are really not going to expect. And that third card is actually one of the cards that I use the most given my conditions and my working conditions. And everyone is aware I travel a lot. But the third card I regret getting is my Charles Schwab. MX Platinum card. Now, the reason being is that I regret getting the Charles Schwab co-branded version instead of getting the vanilla first in order to have a cashback hedge where I could still get another sign-up bonus if for some reason we are forced to stop traveling again or I were to stop traveling for work in the very, very, very near future, I could still have another product that I could sign up for and get the bonus on and still have that 1.1 cent per point value cash back rate that I can, you know, lean back on. I don't regret the Amex Platinum card per se. I think it's a wonderful card. And for anyone who travels, especially anyone who travels as much as me and the wife do, we, this is, this card has, absolutely totally been worth every single nickel plus more and we're probably gonna go ahead and keep it even though um well i did a retention so yeah i may not call this year but the fact is we're gonna go ahead and keep it because it provides outstanding utility for our lifestyle because we have to travel for work i just simply regret getting the co-branded version instead of the vanilla version first i think that would have been a much smarter play on my part or even if i'd have got the vanilla and referred my wife to get the carl schwab the charles schwab version I mean, there, there are different ways we could have played this. Um, once again, this is from the beginning of my supercharged credit journey, YouTube hanging out in the community lifestyle. But the fact is a mistake is still a mistake. And this has been yet another credit confession. Like the cards, but unfortunately didn't make smart decisions. And I hope that this will stop you from making said decisions. Even if you do like some of the cards that I have here, the first five, they, they were horrible. But these are actually decent cards. It's just I more so regret exactly the way I went about getting them, which was not particularly smart. So that is about it. I thank you guys for watching. And please check out some other videos. I'm going to go ahead and put up there or around in that general area. I do appreciate you coming through. And if you stuck around to the end, you are greatly appreciated and I will catch you in the next one.